rare archaeological trove just discovered in the Judean desert, stashed away in a cave in the Ain Gedi Nature Reserve. Roman swords and pilum throwing spears dating back 1,900 years. These weapons are believed to be the spoils of war stashed away by Bar Kokhba's Jewish rebels for use against their Roman conquerors. The four swords were unusually well preserved and discovered entirely by accident. A team from the Israeli Antiquities Authority had been doing some photography on some ancient inscriptions in the cave when they spotted the weapons stashed away in the depth of a crack in the cave wall. Now, this, this discovery provides some insights on how our ancestors lived and how they made war. Now, for much more on this, we are joined by Dr. Guy Steibel, a lecturer of archaeology and ancient and near eastern cultures at Tel Aviv University. Thank you so much for being with us. I guess the big question is, what did we find here? How big of a deal is the finding? It is a big deal. I mean, I don't know whether to compare it to aliens or not, but uh, the fact that we have a regards from, from the past and in such an exquisite uh, condition uh, is truly once in a lifetime uh, discovery. But it's, uh, it's more than just a discovery itself. It's more than just having the swords beautifully still uh, sheathed in the scabbard, and you can see the wood, and you can see the leather, and it, it, it's it's truly beyond words. Uh, um, I can testify that um, the blade itself is, is still sharp to a degree that you can harm yourself, which is truly mind-blasting for us archaeologists that deal with Roman military equipment. But the possibility to shed light not only about this moment in time, but actually from a very remote place to shed light on the entire Roman Empire, um, for us, the people who study the past, uh, is the biggest task. Not to speak only about the artifact, but to speak about the people, uh, to speak about the people who produce the sword. How come we have swords that came um, seemingly from the region of the Danube, um, of all places, how come they ended up uh, in a remote place like the Judean desert? Who owned them? How they came to the possession of the rebels? Uh, and this is what we are after. Uh, if I may quote Winston Churchill, who said this is not the end, it is maybe the beginning uh, um, uh, of the end. So we, we are actually just uh, on the threshold of trying to suffer What's the sword? What are the narratives that the sword will tell us? Well, you actually in many ways preface some of my next questions by throwing out that half dozen set of questions. Well, what are the narratives? What do we have the possibility of prefacing here? They're clearly Roman, uh, but some, uh, when we speak about the Roman Empire, uh, think about uh, Ukraine nowadays and the fact that uh, Russians are using drones that were produced in Iran. The Roman army acted as an empire. We have soldiers that were recruited in Britain and in Pannonia and Hungary nowadays and ended up uh, trying to uh, eliminate a revolt, a Jewish revolt on the very other side. So when we speak uh, about the swords themselves, um, some of them appears to come uh, from the region, and I'm very cautious here, um, of the Danube, at least one of them is the first appearance of this type in the entire uh, Roman East. So we're actually rewriting history uh, at the moment, and we're changing some of our paradigms. Uh, but I'm, as an archaeologist, uh, my goal is is to go beyond um, the artifact, to go beyond the sword, and actually to try to shed light on the peoples themselves, who own them, who produce them, who send them, who ship them. And what were the circumstances of them being either looted or taken and then uh, being stashed in the cave? Um, I may say that nowadays we're fortunate to have in our arsenal, so to speak, uh, various possibilities from carbon-14 dating and DNA uh, sampling uh, and the study of the wood and isotopes. So um, as a scientist, I'm always optimistic. Uh, but uh, what is so beautiful about this discovery are not the answers, but actually the new questions that emerge from that discovery. Um, 
I always tell my students in Tel Aviv University that we should remember factor P, which is being patient. And uh, it takes time, uh, but there's no doubt that this stash of find uh, with a team and an international team, mainly Israelis colleagues, uh, will be able to shed much more light in the coming years uh, about the circumstances and what are the narratives behind this amazing discovery. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Steibel, for explaining some of that and really giving us a, a glimpse at the ancient past in this region. It's something that we're going to look forward to seeing the findings of, all of us, for a long time to come. Thank you. Same, same here.